thanks for joining with us at Life Center today. For those of you who I haven't met, my name is Tyler. And uh, Life Center, we are passionate about helping people know Jesus and making Jesus known. It's why we do what we do. And today we're going to speak to the subject of caring. I've, I've titled today's message, Who Cares? Can you, can you say that with me? Who cares? How many of you have ever had that conversation with somebody? You know, you're, you're passionate about something, you're excited about something, and they look at you and they say, who cares? You know, I, I want you to recognize there's a lot of things in life that get our attention. But what is it that gets our care? There's a lot of things that are fighting for our attention. In fact, a study that was done in April of 2020 says that modern individuals, they experience up to 5,000 advertisements every single day. I want you to think about that. 5,000 advertisements are coming at you all the time. And how many of you know what gets your attention eventually will move you to what you care about? If you don't believe me, let me give you an example. How many of you, you've, you've ever been watching TV, a commercial comes on, maybe it's for floor mats, hypothetically, and five minutes earlier, like you didn't even care about the floor mats in your car, but now all of a sudden, because of this advertisement, you're saying, I need new floor mats. Those floor mats would make my car better. Now, you, you were not thinking that 30 seconds earlier, but all of a sudden, because something grabbed your attention, now you care about something that you weren't caring about just a few moments before. And what I want us to wrestle with today is, what is it that Jesus wants us to care about? Because unless it captures our attention, it's going to be hard for us to move into caring about what he cares about. And so today I want us to look together to the book of 1 John. It's a letter that the Apostle John writes. If you have your Bibles, it's all the way to the back. If you hit Revelation, take a left, go a few pages back, you'll find yourself in 1 John. One of the themes that he talks about over and over again in this letter is this concept, this idea of love. And that love isn't just this emotion or this feeling. Love is actually demonstrated and revealed in what God has done for us and now how we are called to live out this following of Jesus. It says this in 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. Can you say from God? Now, I, I want to I pause there for a second and, and help make sure that we understand a very important concept. Because I think at times in life, when we extend love, we, we kind of look at ourselves and like, oh man, I'm pretty loving today. Man, I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job. But what John is helping his readers understand and helping us understand today is this love, it does not originate in us, no, it originates from God, and is as God deposits that love in us, it works through us. So in other words, when, when I'm able to love somebody else well in Jesus' name, I don't get the credit. Why? Because that love didn't originate with me, it originated from God. Unless he gives me a deposit, I am without hope of actually expressing authentic love like he calls me to do. He goes on, and, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Now that word knows is significant as well. This is another key concept that John will use in his writings from time to time. And this idea of knowing God, it's not just knowing data or information about God. It's not just knowing Bible verses or Bible stories about God. It's, it's actual, authentic relationship. How many of you, you follow some people on social media and you feel like you know them? Because like you've seen how their house is decorated. You, you know what their favorite thing is to eat. That's pretty much all we know about people on social media, right? Like, that's, that's their food. That's, but the, there's a huge difference between authentic 
relationship and just knowing some data about somebody. And John here, he's, he's helping us understand, listen, whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Relationship. Authentic. Anyone who does not love does not know God. Let me say that again. That one stings. Anyone who does not love does not know God because God is love. In other words, love is proof of being a disciple of Jesus. Jesus himself made that point in John 13, 35. He goes on. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. That word simply means atonement, sacrifice, payment. It goes on. Beloved, if God loved us like this, if God so loves us, we also ought to love one another. Skip down to verse 19. We love because he first loved us. Come on, would you read that last verse with me? We love because he first loved us. In other words, it's because of this work of grace that God has done. The, the fact that he sent his son to become the payment, the offering for our sin. And now that love as it was made manifest, it not only comes to us, now it is able to work through us. We can love others. Why? Because God first loved us. It doesn't originate with us. We're not the source. We're simply the conduit. We are the ones who can make it revealed, make it known to those whom we come in contact with. God's love is revealed in what he did, and now that love comes through us, but it doesn't just come to us. It also works through us. See, I, I want us to recognize something important today. Jesus, he has a mission for you that's bigger than you. Let me say that again. Jesus has a mission bigger for, or for you that's bigger than you. Well, Tyler, what do you mean by that? Well, so many times and so many days in my life, I've lived on mission, but the mission kind of stopped at the edges of my fingertips. How many you know what I'm talking about? In other words, as long as it doesn't touch me, as long as it doesn't impact me, as long as I can't feel it, I can look at the situation or circumstance and say, who cares? Doesn't hit me, doesn't impact me, doesn't affect or influence anything that I'm doing. And if I'm not careful, I end up living out the course of my days on a mission that's only as big as the circumference of my reach. But I'm convinced that Jesus has a mission for each and every one of us that's bigger than us. That his love, it doesn't just come to us so we can gather together in a church service and get those little goosebumps when ants and singing and going, oh, Jesus loves me. No, the love comes to us. Why? So that we can partner with Jesus in expressing that love and revealing his love to the world around us. Jesus has a mission for you that's bigger than you. When we walk out that love and that care that Jesus invites us to, guess what? Impact happens. We love. We care. Why? Because Jesus loves us. Jesus cared for us. And when we embody that care, listen, care is love with skin on. When I care for somebody, it's love with skin on. It's hard for me to authentically care about somebody or somebody else's situation unless I'm willing to love. Care is love personified and expressed. And at the end of the day, we need to recognize in order for me to actually care, I have to be willing to be moved to compassion. If not, it's easy for me to look at a situation and go, who cares? Who cares? I'm, I'm doing just fine. It doesn't impact me. It doesn't influence me. It doesn't, doesn't touch the, the border or the perimeter of the mission that I'm on. 
But no, Jesus calls us to a much important mission. See, as life center, but more importantly, as a follower of Jesus, here are a few things that I believe we are called to care about. Number one is this. We care about the mission of Jesus. The mission of Jesus matters. Man, that's, that's a good place to say amen. <laughs> Listen, the, the mission that Jesus is on, it should stir us. Why? Because if you've been saved by his grace, that mission came to you and it turned your whole world upside down. See, Jesus, Jesus says this in Matthew 28. He talks about what we often call the great commission. In other words, he, he distributes his mission to his followers. And I want you to recognize it's not the great suggestion. It's the great commission. It says this, Matthew 28, And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go. Can you say go? go? Now, notice what Jesus says here. He doesn't say, go to church every Sunday and sit. Do I want us to gather together? Absolutely. Whether you're online, whether you're in the house. We love coming together, but understand, this isn't the full game. This is just the huddle so that we can play the game effectively. We come together, we, we learn from Scripture. Why? So that we can get on mission with what Jesus is wanting to do. And Jesus says, this is my mission. Go and make disciples. It doesn't say help people make decisions. That's the starting point. But understand, at, at Life Center, we're passionate about helping people to know Jesus. What is that? That's making disciples so that they can turn and Make him known. Disciples make disciples. And we are committed to help making disciples who know how to make disciples who can then help make disciples. This is how we change the world. Amen. This is what Jesus invites us to partner with him in. It's the Great Commission. Go, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe. Another word for that is obey. It's another message for another day. Teaching them to observe all that I've commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Listen, Jesus' passion and purpose that he calls us to includes a promise. And what is that? It's his presence. He's going with us. He's going with us. See, if, if I am a follower of Jesus, yet I don't care about the mission I have to do some soul searching. Because Jesus says, this is what matters. Now that you've experienced salvation, I've, I've got something for you. I've got a mission for you that's bigger than you. So in other words, I, I'm not excused as a follower of Jesus to sit back and go, well, who cares? I'm good. My family's good. I've experienced grace. No, we, we care about the mission of Jesus. And understand this, as, as Life Center, for us, the mission of Jesus is both across the street and around the world. In other words, it's, it's both local and global. So I can't say I care about the mission of Jesus and, and I only put that in the box of somewhere across the sea or, or across a border and then neglect or decline to care about those who are hurting right across the street. And the opposite is just as dangerous. If I just care about those in my backyard, but I don't care about those who I might never meet. The mission of Jesus is both local and global. This is why we're passionate around here about helping people know Jesus and make him known. It's why we do what we do. And yet the question remains, do I care about the mission of Jesus to the point that I'm actively engaged in it? Do I, do I believe that the mission matters so much that it's not just some abstract concept, but I'm, but I'm actively engaged in the mission? You see, Jesus' mission has a specific focus, and that brings us to the second thing that we've we got to care about. We care about the focus of the mission 
which is people. We care about the focus of Jesus' mission. And what is it? All of a sudden, this forces us to take this kind of abstract idea of the mission of Jesus, and all of a sudden, we make it concrete. The mission of Jesus is focused on people. We can't say we care about the mission of Jesus and not care about the people that the mission represents. Let me say it another way. We can't have a true theology of care without a clear practice of care. We can't can't say, well, yeah, I care about people, but if it doesn't show up in, in the practice, In the practical, what do we really have? Maybe it's a concept, maybe it's an idea, but Jesus welcomes us to make it real. And this matters for us at Life Center. Why? Because we want people to experience what Jesus came to make available. In John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus says this, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and kill. And destroy. By the way, this is why we are not Steelers fans as followers of Jesus, okay? Just just in case you need a scripture to prove it. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that they might have what? Life! And have it abundantly! I have no interest in continuing to gather together as this community of believers known as Life Center if we don't reflect the abundant life that Jesus came to offer. What what does it look like if if we claim to be Life Center and people from our city, they walk through our doors or they join with us online and they don't see the life to the full that Jesus came to provide? What does it mean if we engage in a serving event, we go out and, man, bellies are filled with food, but we don't demonstrate, we don't exemplify the abundant life that Jesus makes available? We better change our name. We should change our name to Gathering Center or something. But if we're going to be Life Center, man, let's, let's make sure that we embody the life that Jesus makes available. We want this for our city, but we also want this for our world. And if Jesus cares for the world, followers of Jesus, we must care for the world as well. This brings us to the third thing that I think is important for us to recognize and care about. Our caring, it has to start somewhere, but it can't stop with an event. Our our caring, it's got to start somewhere. But it can't stop with an event. Man, how many times have I been guilty of leveraging an event to sit back and go, yep, I care, I was there for two hours and I passed stuff out. But then I can go through the rest of my week and never be stirred by the opportunities that are right in front of me. Never pray about people in other nations who haven't even had the opportunity to hear the name of Jesus. Let alone get uncomfortable enough to gather together with other Christians. See, it's, it's got to start somewhere, but it, it cannot stop with an event. I, I want us to consider where does our care start and where does it stop? So you have to allow care to become a commitment in our lives, not just an event we attend. Here's one thing I know about Life Center. We, we are good at putting on events, aren't we? We do it well. Hey, come, come t- engage in this thing, man. It's going to be awesome. And Listen, that's a great starting point, but it's not designed to be the stop. Oh, we, we love putting on events. We, we're, we engage in it. Why? Because we want to create on-ramps for all of us to capture the heart, to engage in the mission that Jesus is inviting us to engage in. See, we love, 1 John 4, 19, we love because he first loved us. 
Can I paraphrase this verse and say it a little bit differently for us as Life Center? We care because he first cared for us. We serve because he first served us. We sacrifice, why? Because he first sacrificed for us. It's who we are. It's who we're called to be. You can't tell me it doesn't matter. This last week as I was studying and I, I was looking at some different news articles on my phone, came across articles that I wasn't expecting to see. One headline said this, no end in sight, hunger surges in America amid a spiraling pandemic. Talks about how unprecedented demands for food aid is on the rise as states across the country contemplate new lockdowns. And I knew that I was going to be preaching on this idea that, that we're called to care, and here it is, living out real time right in front of us. Another article said this, two-mile line in Arizona, four-hour wait in Ohio. Millions of Americans are seeking help to avoid going hungry this Thanksgiving. See, we, we can't just look at the circumstances around us and say, who cares? When we know that Jesus cares. And if Jesus cares, I have to allow him to do a work in my heart so that I'm moved to care. Not just care at an emotional level, but that my emotion, my, my attention now moves me to commitment and compassion. We care because he cares. See, I believe with all my heart there, there's going to be opportunities in the coming weeks and months for the church to be the hands and feet of Jesus, maybe like never before. And what that means for us, Life Centers, we, we've got to be ready. We've got to be ready. This matters because, I, I don't know about you, I'm not comfortable knowing that if there's families in Pierce County that have food insecurities, that I can just sit back and go, who, who cares? It, it doesn't impact my mission because it doesn't touch me. But no, no, no. Jesus has a mission for us that's bigger than us. He welcomes us to engage in it, to understand it. We care. We care through giving, yes, but we also care through going. We need both. See, our care doesn't stop with just writing a check. That, that's, a, that's an opportunity. That's an option. That's a part of caring. But more than just writing a check, we're also called to get our hands involved, be a part of what Jesus is wanting to do. See, this week we're taking time to speak to this idea of Life Center Cares. And I want to be clear, Life Center Cares, it's not an event, it's not just a short little program that we thought, oh, that sounds kind of cute. Our team has spent the last number of months thinking, praying, defining, articulating. And there's, there's five main areas that we feel like Jesus is calling us to give emphasis into in the area of missions, both locally and globally. They align with C-A-R-E-S. Take a moment, check out this video. C is for compassion. And compassion through the tangible, application of the opportunities that we have to engage with our greater community. I'm here at our Life Center Food Bank, and we believe, as Jesus believed, as he saw the crowds, it says in Matthew chapter 9, that he had compassion on them. And we believe through feeding people and the benevolent opportunities we have to engage with our greater community, this allows us to be God's hand to his people and show the love of God to all of them. And in the month of December, we will be spending time focusing on these needs every week at the food bank and other various locations. A is for abolishing sex slavery. We will accomplish this through partnering with local and global ministries. 
Locally, our ministry of STEAM comes alongside women who are survivors of commercial sexual exploitation. Globally, our international partner, Rescue Freedom, is much like the mission of STEAM. Rescue Freedom comes alongside women and children from a life of sexual slavery to help restore them to a life of freedom, independence, and hope by providing for their physical, emotional, and holistic needs. Together, we can more effectively meet the needs of survivors and fight to abolish slavery once and for all. R is for reaching the generations through our partnerships with local and global missionaries by helping launch local church plans as well as supporting missionaries around the world. Through following the Great Commission of Matthew 28, we're able to support those reaching the generations in many different pockets of the world. E is for education. Locally, we are partnering with local public schools by assisting with meals, school supplies, and mentoring. Each year, we do an annual backpack and school supply giveaway. Your generosity provides a thousand meals to families in the local school district. Globally, we are participating in child sponsorship and supporting the schools in India with Calcutta Mercy Missions. S is for supporting foster children, foster families, and orphans. There's a simple scripture written in the book of James that says, pure and genuine religion in the sight of God the Father means caring for orphans and widows in their distress and refusing to let the world corrupt you. Through our CARES initiatives, we are continuing our partnership with Olive Crest as we come alongside to support the over 10,000 children who are foster children here in Washington State in the role of foster families partnering with organizations to help facilitate domestic and, and international adoption. And globally, we are involved with taking care of the least, the lost, and the left behind children with organizations like Calcutta Mercy and other child sponsorship organizations. Those are the five areas that strategically we're going to give attention to. Those are the five hills that we want to tackle. We talk about C, that's, that's compassion. We want to make sure that those with food insecurities in our own community, that they have their needs met. It's why throughout these last number of months of global pandemic, we've been sure to provide groceries and you've been sure to provide groceries for those who are in need at all of our locations, our Life Center Food Bank, at our Rainier campus, right here at our central campus, up on the north end of Tacoma, at the Sanctuary campus, there's been bags of groceries provided because we believe that Jesus calls us to be compassionate to those who are in need. Internationally, the work that's taking place in Calcutta, feeding people, the medical aid that's taking place, it is compassion being lived out. Letter A is about abolishing sex slavery. Many of us are aware of the reality of human trafficking, and it's not just an issue somewhere overseas. It's happening right here in our backyard, and it matters. That's why our ministry esteem is so significant, because they're working and coming alongside of those who have been exploited, and they're bringing them into this hope of a new life and freedom in Christ but also our partnership with Rescue Freedom internationally. A number of years ago, I was with K.K. Devraj in Mumbai, India. And as I was walking with him through the red light district, he was telling me story after story of all of these women and children who were kept as slaves, locked away in cages. How God in his grace has been providing opportunities for them to rescue different individuals out of that trafficking and pull them into a, a new hope and a new life through Jesus Christ. Friends, it matters. It matters. R is for reaching this generation. We want to come alongside of church planters because here's what I believe. If we're going to reach Tacoma and we're going to reach Pierce County, it's going to take more than just Life Center. So we, we are praying for more church planners. We are praying for God to create a ripple effect and an impact and opportunity locally, but also globally. We're coming alongside of missionaries who serve in other countries that even though we may never step foot in those countries, they're an extension of the work that we're doing. And we're a part of the work that they're doing through reaching this generation. E is for education. We've already created a strategic partnership with Franklin Elementary throughout the summer months as families were navigating the dynamics of COVID. 
Every single week, Life Center, we provided bags of groceries for families in need. In a couple of weeks, we're going to be doing our Christmas meals giveaway. There's other strategies, both locally and globally, in the area of education that we're passionate about. The last one, S, supporting foster kids, foster families, and international orphans. This matters. Jesus calls us to care about the most vulnerable in our community, the least of these. And for a while now, we've had a a great partnership with Olive Crest, the work that they're doing with foster children across our state. But we want to see that expand and grow even more. So today, can I invite you, for those who are in the room, would you grab that envelope that says Life Center Cares? For those who are watching online, you can open up your Life Center app on your phone. But here's what I want you to consider. When we talk about caring, part of caring happens through our giving, and part of caring happens through our going. But here's what we're doing and believing for this year, starting from Thanksgiving Eve last weekend all the way through Christmas Eve this next month. We're praying and believing God to provide resources to see us make an impact in these five areas. And again, Life Center Cares, it's not an event. It's an ongoing strategy. It's our initiative for missions, local and global. So you're going to be hearing about it for months and years to come. We want to make an impact in these areas. And we're we're praying and believing God for big things. Our goal between now and the end of the year is that we would see $125,000 come in for Life Center Cares. All of our campuses are coming together on this. We're all leaning into this. Why? Because we care. And here's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you to simply pray and consider what God would have you to give above and beyond your normal giving. Way to make this practical is for you to consider what is it that you earn in one day? Maybe you want to give one day's wage towards this initiative above and beyond your normal giving. And so if you work hourly, you could calculate how many hours and what what you make in a day. If you work for a salary, then you could figure out, okay, what, what does that day equate to? And I would encourage you prayerfully between now and the end of the year, could we put fuel in the tank to see some of these initiatives and and some progress in in us tackling these hills. We we believe that these five areas are areas that Jesus is calling us to give emphasis to. And we're going to do that through our giving, but we're also going to do that through our going. And in the weeks ahead, there's going to be some going opportunities. One happens next Saturday. You heard a few moments ago that Convoy of Hope is going to be with us next Saturday at our Rainier campus. And Maybe you want to sign up. Maybe you want to be a part. Maybe this is your starting point. It's not going to end with the event, but but it's a good on-ramp for you. There's going to be a semi-truck full of food that we have to unpack and put together, and there's going to be 500 meals made available. That same Saturday right here at our central campus, we're giving away Christmas trees to foster families. Your generosity, Life Center, is making that happen where we can bless those who are caring for the most vulnerable in our community. A couple of weekends after that, we're going to do what we do every year, which is our Christmas meals giveaway in partnership with Tacoma Public Schools and the Bethel School District. The last number of years, we've given away 500 meals. This year, by God's grace, we are going to give away 1,000 meals to families across Pierce County to make sure that needs are met. But what that means is it's going to take a lot of hands getting involved in putting those meals together. So the hands that just clapped, come on, get ready, because those hands are going to start packing stuff. All right? Because we, we believe, we, we do this because we care. It's not so that we can get a pat on the back. No, this didn't originate with us. The love that we're showing, it originates in God and it works through us. Because he's got a mission for us that's bigger than us. Today, can I invite you to grab your phone, open up your smartphone to that Life Center app. I want to talk about next steps. We do this every single week. Because we believe that 
whether you've been serving Jesus for three days or three decades, you have a next step. That's what happens when we look at Scripture is we should be asking, okay, what should I do now in light of what I just heard? And today I want to give you a few next steps. Number one is this. Maybe you're listening online today. Maybe you're in this room and you realize that as I was talking about the love of God that's revealed in Jesus, that you've never trusted in that love. See, that love can be known by you today. And the good news is that Jesus, he became your sacrifice. He became your substitute so that your sin, your shame, your separation, it has been dealt with, paid in full. That's called grace. And it's available for you today. And you experience it by just saying yes to Jesus. Maybe that's your next step. A second next step is this, that you're going to care through giving. In other words, maybe you're going to take time and, and you check that box. You say, okay, Tyler, I'm going I'm to pray and I'm going to ask God, what do you want me to do between now and the end of the year? And, and I'm going to care through giving. I'm going to be generous. I'm going to show up. I'm going I'm to use the resource that God has blessed me with to be a blessing. Here's the third next step. You're going to care through going. You're going to care through going. So those of you who are interested in signing up and being a part next Saturday with Convoy of Hope, listen, this is your opportunity. Check that box. For those who check that box, our team, they're going to send an email to you. They're going to follow up with you this week, get you connected. Why? Because even though it doesn't end with an event, we can still engage in the event. We're going to serve. We're going to love. Today, can I invite you to Pray with me. Would you join me? Whether you're watching online, whether you're in this room, would you join me? Jesus, thank you that you do all things well. And Lord, thank you that you have a mission for us that's bigger than us. Thank you, Lord, for your mission and, and your passion for it and the focus of it, which is people. And God, I pray that the things that you're passionate about, we would be passionate about. The things that have your attention would have our attention. Lord, I pray that you would continue to help Life Center and the people of Life Center to live out this call to care. Would you give us opportunity in these five areas to make a difference, both locally and globally? As well, listen, today, maybe it's your desire to put your trust in Jesus, to say yes to him. Would you say the simple prayer with me? Say, Jesus, thank you for loving me. I put my trust in you. Forgive me of my sin. Make me a new creation. And help me to follow you every day of my life. In your name I pray. Amen.